Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Breakthrough You podcast. I am super excited. I am overwhelmed with joy to have on our show today, Zachariah Sanders, the founder of Scuba. And so if you don't know what Scuba means, we're definitely going to be getting into that. Um, it's definitely interesting because when I first heard of Scuba, not only um, did I hear about it, but I have joined Scuba. It's been uh, a life-changing experience. Uh, and so with that, we're going to jump in here. And um, Zachariah Sanders is the founder of Scuba. And so you may ask yourself, what is Scuba? Well, we're going to get into that. And if you're not following them, you need to follow them on Instagram, S-C-U-B-A, Scuba. Scuba, is it Scuba Collective, right? Yeah, Scuba.Collective. Yes, sir. Dot Collective. So, Zachariah, once again, thank you for hopping on and talking with us uh, today. So, if you can explain to us, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself to those that are listening, those that are watching this video, that will be listening and watching this video, uh, introduce yourself and then explain to us what is Scuba and how yes, did it sir. come about? Yes, absolutely. I appreciate all the uh, kind words, Josh. Uh, well, I'm Zachariah Sanders. I have uh, come from Kansas City, Missouri. Originally, I've lived in Nashville roughly five, six years collectively. And uh, Scuba came about, actually. Um, it was a club that my dad had back in seminary. And it was him and two other gentlemen who were studying to be preachers at the time. And uh, they stole the acronym from somebody else. And from what I understand, the person that they took the acronym from doesn't even know where it came from originally so apparently the name has been passed around uh but i've applied for the trademark so it's mine now as far as i'm concerned but it's uh smoking cigars under biblical authority that was the joke and so all these seminary guys church guys would get together and that's what they do and i always thought that that was hilarious and as I got old enough, I got into cigars myself, and I've always wanted to start my own version. And uh, I never envisioned it to be anything huge, just friends of mine getting together and smoking cigars, you know, engaging in deep conversation, and just having a good time at one of the many good smoke shops in Nashville. And uh, it slowly evolved just naturally, not by anything. Uh, that was a, a big effort. First, what happened was we had a big group text going and people just showing up to Nashville Cigar over there in Green Hills. And uh, it was always men and women. And then what happened was we started posting about it on Instagram. Yeah, that's right. Because men, guys, guys and girls both go to it. And it's really, it's really a big deal now. Yes, sir. So it was just, again, organic growth. We were going to Nashville Cigar. And uh, my friend Joel, good friend of mine, who is an excellent photographer, uh, he came on and he started doing it with me just together. I was, you know, just getting together with different church friends and Joel kind of volunteered himself because he noticed that we were doing a group text. And as you know, group messages get completely insane. And so he said, why don't we just post about it on Instagram? So that's what happened first. He would just make a quick graphic and post about it on Instagram and start letting people, hey, these are where our meetings are happening. So that way we weren't getting lost in a group text. And uh, he's a photographer by nature. And so we would show up to these events with the camera. Well, we're very good it. photographer. Oh, yes, he is wonderful. And, uh, you know, a true artist, he edits all the photos, takes all the photos. It's fantastic. And, uh, but yeah, we started doing the events and they started getting bigger because girls started hearing about it, uh, different people at church. And they were like, oh, we want to crash the cigar club. And they did it at first as like a joke to go hang out somewhere else, but then they would come and hang out because they were having a good time with it. And so it was a natural evolution to uh, all of a sudden, like people were showing up 
And the funny thing that happened was Joel would bring his camera, take pictures of people. And it was funny because somebody said, oh, I really don't like that photo you took of me for the Instagram page. And so Joel being a photographer, you know, kind of laughed at it. And he's like, all right, I'll step up my game and brought his nice equipment. He brought his, uh, you know, photo editing skills and started taking really good photos. And so from that, the page started getting a following. It's not a huge following. We have over 200 at this point, I think. I haven't really checked, but that started getting traction to how people show up just for the Instagram photos or they'll show up because, um, you know, they found us just scrolling through Instagram or somebody sent them a link. So there really wasn't a concentrated effort to grow it into what it is. It was all just organic because we were having fun with it. And uh, I think you came to the event we did at the Red Phone booth. That was about a 60 top. And uh, I think the biggest one we had might have been around 70. So we'll have a kind of varying. Sometimes it's 30 to 40. Sometimes we get to that 50 to 60 range. Uh, sometimes it's much smaller. We don't really have a goal of how many people to get there. We're just there to connect people and have a good time. So, you know, I, yeah, the red phone booth was the first time that I darkened the doors in the back room. Yes. And when I went actually just walking into the red phone booth for my first time, I was just like, wow. And then um, going into the back room, and being met with so many young professionals there. I mean, you talk about a place and a group of young professionals, a place to not just network, but to uh, uh, create community, to meet friends, to, I mean, it's an amazing networking group. And then to have this networking group around, uh, you know, a lot of young professionals smoke cigars, not that they smoke cigars every day. It may be that they only smoke the cigars once a month and it's at that place, you know, maybe have a bourbon or whiskey, but it's just a great environment where people can get together in a safe spot. They're a bunch of young professionals that are all driven, have mindsets that are going places that, um, and I think, you know, all kind of go to the same church uh, and within the community as well. And so, I mean, it's a very unique networking event that you have, Zachariah. You know, I, I think since I started going to that first one, I think I've gone to every one. I probably missed one or two. But the locations that you have these events at are incredible. And like you pack the place out like there's, you're right, it's like 50, 60, 70 people showing up. And it is, it not only, not only does it create community, but the local business benefits from this because everybody's dropping cash and helping the local business. So, I mean, you're helping the community in so many different ways and people that are going there to actually like network and just have fun, they end up networking with each other and creating business as well. Absolutely, yes. And that's the thing. It's so many things in one because it's really, like I said, originally started from sort of a ministry place where uh, instead of people going out to Broadway um, on a Friday night and getting plastered, what's happening is they're engaging, still having a little bit of alcohol and everything, but nothing in excess and just engaging in conversation and connection with people, which is a big thing for us. Uh, networking uh, through Scuba, I met you and we work at the same bank now, which is awesome because I was looking for a job for a while and that was a solution for me. And I've had friends who are boat salesmen sell some boats there. I've had friends who are realtors come make connections there. Um, people within the banking industry at different banks, like I'm a friend at Atlantic Union who comes, a friend at Cinevis who comes. And uh, really it's just a thing where it's not like a cocktail, mister, where you're going to connect and exchange business cards. But what it's become is more of a thing of just organic connection where you're engaging with your neighbor, you're engaging with friends that you may have brought, you're meeting new friends, you're finding out cool things that people are doing. And it's just facilitating conversation, which is really one of the big things where it's that's really the best kind of networking at the end of the day, rather than saying, what can I do to get business from these people or what can you do to add value to me? Rather, it's just a genuine connection that 
adds value just from a place of wanting to be there because people show up to school, but not because of the cigars even. Most people who come don't even smoke cigars. It's really a thing of just the environment. You know, and, but uh, mm -hmm. that, that's absolutely right because a lot of people, you know, a lot of them, well, there's some of them that, that don't drink, that don't smoke cigars. They're just there because it's community, right? It's there because other friends are there. They feel safe there and they get to talk and they get to network and they get to, um, it's like the, the event every month is, you know, where's scuba? Plus, you know, not only that, but you have themes at these uh, networking events. Like you have the 007 where everybody came dressed up in a suit and like, um, like James Bond. And then you have the other one, which was um, um, the, the Rose. What, what's it called? Oh, The Bachelor. Um, we did The Bachelor. The Bachelor. Yes, mm -hmm. The Bachelor. And so each each one has a different theme. And I remember in October, you had uh, Halloween, the Halloween theme, and everyone was like Star Wars. And I mean, I mean, it, it, it adds that factor to where you want it. Like you look forward to these events and you dress up and you um, you get dressed to the nines and you're coming in and you're networking and you're it's just it's clean it's fun it's you're you know it's very professional respectable and you're with a group of professionals that from all diverse from all walks of life and diversity and just everyone's there to have a good time to meet people and you've really created something very unique yeah thank you and you know really it's just I'll just call it God's doing because again, there was really no concerted effort. Like you talked about the themes. Uh, what started there was we were going to the Fable Lounge for the first time. And I think somebody said, oh, you should make it where people are dressing in black and white. Uh, I suggested it to Joel and he's like, all right. And he made a, a black and white tiger or something, put it on the Instagram page of the story. And people showed up dressing in black and white. And we noticed people love these themes. And so we kind of just, started doing the themes and we do some you know we're kind of still evolving the business model trying to find a way where it's sustainable because the photo shoots and editing the photos takes a good amount of work um but yeah that's the it was just again a natural evolution where somebody suggested it and then uh the current theme we're doing for the event we're having on the 24th the dad scuba that was just suggested by my brother and people suggest things like oh you know what this could be fun and we listen and we Kind of create just an environment for fun where people get to dress up. And I think that's one of the reasons why women love scuba. They get to dress up to the theme. And yeah, again, it's just all organic and nothing's really forced, which is the cool thing about it. So I can just come dressed up as my normal self, right? <laughs> yes, for dad scuba, I think that'll fit perfectly. For dad get... scuba, I just come, just come straight from work dressed up as this. That is incredible. So let me ask you this question, Zachariah. So are you naturally an outgoing individual? Um, yeah. That's the question. And then how does that play into scuba? Have you always been outgoing like, just your entire life? Um, you know, I've you know, I always had a thing for people. I, I'd say I've been fairly outgoing, but when I was younger, not really. And that's, again, where I kind of say, I don't know what it is except a God thing at scuba because I was the guy when I whenever I threw a birthday party growing up like two people would show up you know I was never one to plan events I was never one to uh, have a bunch of friends and since I came down to Nashville uh, to turn my life around after the pandemic um, again it just grew to where I have that much of a friend group and all people uh, come up to me that I don't know and it was something I really had to work on because I wanted to be someone who would be able to have a good network, not because I wanted power or anything like that, but it was really just a thing of, I saw the value in being connected to people and being able to be a connector of people. Like I know that you're a connector of people, for example, and you add a lot of value just because you know someone who has someone's solution. And that's something I respect about you, Josh, and I respect about a few other of my friends who have that same talent. And I worked on uh, being that for people. and that's one of the things with scuba is I'll get to meet a lot of people 
And when I'm there, I'll try to talk to everyone, make sure everyone's comfortable, have my finger on the pulse of what's going on in the room, what's needed. If the music needs to be louder or something's going on, I try to accommodate. So it wasn't necessarily something I was naturally good at, but I had to work at it for sure. And I'm glad that I am where I am today and able to do that sort of thing. No, definitely. I know that there is such a big difference. And I think uh, a lot of people don't understand the difference between just networking and connecting. Um, I think mm-hmm. a networking, like we were talking about earlier, networking is what can I get from you? What can you get from me? Versus when you turn that around into a connecting factor of how can I connect others together? And then by connecting others, I in turn, am helping myself Uh, And when we think of others before ourselves and put others before ourselves, it in turn comes right back around to blessing us. Uh, And so I think it's such a blessing to be a connector versus, um, you know, of course, networking is good. But to know the difference between networking and then also connecting, I feel like connecting is just a powerful way to help build someone's business. But um, getting back to scuba. So how do you every day? the wheels of your mind are turning how do you stay like in front and and keeping it like um i want to i don't want to say relevant but just keeping it new keeping it fresh to where every month they're looking forward to um the next thing the next you know costume the next dress up the next theme like what goes into all of that makeup yeah yeah so what happens a lot of the time is uh, I'll be in communication. I think that's key. I'll have to be on my phone and make sure that um, you know, I'm connecting well with the venue, for instance. Right now, we have a great relationship with uh, Fernando from Smoking Ale down in Brentwood, and we've decided to keep returning there because they take care of us and they care about what's going on, and that's awesome. So I'll communicate with the venue, and that's really kind of my thing. I'll communicate with the venue, and I'll post things on social media and uh, Joel will be in charge of content and uh, you know getting the photos together taking the photos editing the photos and he and I will just brainstorm as to all right how can we sustain this because uh, we've had to take a variety of different practices in uh, to where we're just figuring out all right what's the plan what do we like about certain venues what do we not like are we returning to a certain venue Um, how are the people acting? And that's sort of a big thing because I know that there's a temptation always for people to kind of click in. So we kind of talk about culture, like what's happening with the community. Um, And that's really a big thing. It's just constant talking of how can we evolve and also how can we make it sustainable? Because we've had some of these photo shoots, like we uh, uh, shot the Bond, the James Bond photo shoot at a... uh, big house in green hills with a jaguar that he rented um that the uh, model rented and everything and it was a big production we had to edit things and promote things making sure we're posting i'm going in group chats and really the thing is we're constantly trying to figure out all right how can we keep it fresh but how can we make it so we're not working too hard and we can actually you know get stuff done with our jobs and churches and the people we're interacting with and that's really it it just communicating back and forth is the main key and just making sure that we can sustain it and keep it good for people. So that's the thing. Definitely. So how important is it um, to have the right people around you to you're growing this network uh, scuba and I know you can't do it all on your own. And you've got to oftentimes share the load, share the vision. How important is it for you and for other businesses? And this can go for like businesses. This is, can, can just go for individuals. It's you've got to have the right people around you all the time that are going to sharpen you, that are going to have the same mindset, um, that are going to run uh, at, a, at the same pace as you or faster than you. Someone that's going to challenge you day in and day out. And especially with either running a business or just you in your personal life, and especially with scuba, how important is that to have the right people around you that are that see the glass half full rather than see the glass half empty? And I know we have to have those people that are, you know, kind of the, 
you know, poking the holes, you know, seeing the holes in something where, because then we need those type of people. But for those people to, to keep you sharp and keep challenging you, how important is that to, to keep the right people around you, Zachariah? Oh, it's highly important because there's a variety of things that can go right and there's a variety of things that go wrong and you need people on your team because uh, Joel and I talked about expanding scuba and we collaborated with a couple people from our uh, church on the uh, bachelorette scuba and they were awesome. There's really nothing that I have against them, but Joel and I talked and we were like, we've just added another layer of complexity when we're trying to make things more simple and maybe we need to find good ways for just Tim and I to run it. And so we went back to just Tim and I. And, uh, you know, I think it's again, just a thing because so many people look at scuba and think, oh, there's a cash grab in there somewhere because Joel and I are doing it all for free. And uh, there's really nothing that benefits us too much. Smoking ale takes care of us. Like Fernando will hand us a free cigar or free drink or something, you know, nothing too crazy, just reasonable enough. Cause at the end of the day, we don't want anything out of it. This is just a labor of love for the both of us. And uh, we've had some people say, oh, you can just turn this into a follower and make it a paid membership or start charging tickets to these events or whatever else. And I think the uh, beautiful thing about Scuba is that it has been free. We intend to keep it free. And uh, if we do anything from char for charging money, it might be t-shirts or something else. Or maybe if we do a special event, we don't rule that out. But the thing is, it's been free. There's no charge and everyone's welcome. And people of all walks are welcome. And the thing about keeping the right people around you, I think the wrong people sort of filter themselves out because they can tell what we're about and how sincere and intentional we are. And if someone comes trying to cause a ruckus, they just won't feel comfortable there. And uh, we're all about keeping that good environment because, you know, like I said, it's sort of a ministry to where we want to reflect the kingdom. We want to have Christ-like behavior and, uh, you know, it'll be a witness to somebody because the cool thing with scuba too, beyond just regular networking, it's also kingdom networking because uh, somebody can walk into scuba and feel more comfortable than walking into say church. Cause we do not have a Bible study. We're not going around and throwing scripture at people. I'll talk a little bit about the Bible and my telegram group chat with scuba before each event, but you know, we're not throwing the Bible in your face. But at the same time, we're showing people like, you know, there's something different about this group. Maybe I will consider church now. So that was a very long winded, but that's just, yeah, absolutely. You got to keep the right people around you. But also it's a welcome thing to let somebody in you might not be comfortable with just so you can bring to light something you just didn't see beforehand. And so that's the big thing with scuba. Scuba, all are welcome. But if you're causing a ruckus, we're not going to want you to come back. So... No, that is, that is totally, totally uh, the truth. I know the, the times that I go there, uh, it's so welcoming. Uh, the environment is very warm. Um, people are very proactive in, in coming up to you, introducing themselves, wanting to get to know you. Um, you know, a lot of times, uh, a lot of times they see, you know, uh, that, the only Jesus some people see is you, right? And so they get yeah. there, they, they see they see that. So, I mean, Scuba has done a really good job of creating a community where everybody feels welcome. And it's just the buzz around town of what's, when Scuba coming up, or we, we send those little IMs with the little Scuba guy and Scuba, scuba diving. Yes. Like, okay, scuba is, scuba is coming up. Hey, Joan, yeah. thanks for joining us uh, on the podcast uh, today. Totally appreciate you uh, coming on board and, and joining us. Any thoughts on the subject that we're talking about? Hey, Josh, it's always good to be on. I wish I was on more often, but I'm, I'm doing better. That's what I say. Definitely. I miss seeing you and talking with you. Hello, Zachariah. Hi, I Joan. did have a couple of questions. I did join a, a few minutes late. Um, what town where are you where are you originally from and also what is the reason for the name scuba and i am not familiar so can you as josh was referencing where you meet up um just tell me like where do you meet up uh, just so this is a very new uh, my my ears are all new to this so uh Excellent. yeah 
Yeah, we covered a little bit in the beginning, but uh, I'm from Kansas City, Missouri originally. I've been in Nashville collectively about five years. Mm -hmm. uh, scuba is uh, smoking cigars under biblical authority. And uh, <laughs> okay. yeah. Cool. yeah. Let so that blow just... your mind, Joan. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Now let me let me say so. I think uh, in the Bible where it talks about in his train filled the temple, they're talking about cigar smoke there. <laughs> Probably so. That's the thing. You know, you want to get into the deep theological thing of it. Uh, smoke. <laughs> smoke can be representative of prayer a lot of times. There's a lot of representations in some of the Old Testament books like Leviticus about burning incense and lifts a pleasing aroma to the Lord. <laughs> That's represent. They were smoking cigars. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well have been, but you know, that's representative Ooh. of prayer. And I've heard a preacher saying, just think about it. Like when a whole bunch of believers are in a room, it should be like smoke is filling the room and the devil will get to coughing. And so <laughs> I do think about that whenever I'm at scuba and see the room filled with smoke. Think about what it said in the book of Isaiah about the temple being filled with smoke and this train filling up the temple. Yeah. You know, it's that's a fun little thing to think about. Well, I can just put, I can just stick a cigar in my mouth and I'll be okay. Good. Nobody's required to smoke. That so. Is. so you, so you guys no. sort of go to different places, different, um, different smoking rooms, cigars. Yes, like, is that it? Yeah. So you get yeah, to we... like do uh, sort of like a, uh, well, of course, it's the ministry aspect. You get to meet people, but you also get to see Nashville. That's awesome because you get to check out places that you may not go on a regular basis, which is good to say, you know, is that, is that do you mix? I, I'm, I'm hearing about the theme, which I think is really, really nice, too, that you dress up certain ways. Um, but also, I mean, do you tend to frequent one cigar room versus more another or do you intentionally rotate them how does that work yeah so we've kind of just started a newer model because like i said this is still fairly new we started in about april of last year and so we've kind of experimented throughout where we're just going to different places and we really want to go where we're welcome and people kind of show that intentionality and the biggest partner for us lately uh, has been smoking ale and so we've been going there in Brentwood that's where we're going this month and we're trying a new model where we're going to go to smoke and ale every other month and have a theme pretty much and uh, in the in-between months we're going to try to do some more non-themed events where there's not a huge photo shoot or anything but rather it's just here's where we're going to be and we're going to check out a place and we've rotated places in the past the uh, Fable Lounge um, used to be good and accommodating to us. We used to go there quite a bit. We uh, have been to a Nashville cigar. We've tried out a spot in Columbia. Columbia was way too far. I think it was me, Joel, my brother and Josh Gonzalez. So that was way too far for all the Nashville people. And uh, uh, we've tried a place downtown. And so we just kind of experiment. And, you know, I don't want to say anyone has treated us poorly by any means, but um, the reason we're going to smoke and ale now is because they've just been very accommodating to us. They believe in the vision and uh, they want to go that extra mile. And, uh, you know, some places are like, all right, you can show you know, up. That's mm -hmm. awesome. You know, the other thing too, is that when, when the group goes to a place, they're not going to leave the place a wreck, you know, and exactly. a lot of times, uh, a lot of businesses may be like, you get a big group of of people and they're like oh man afterwards they're gonna leave a wreck they're gonna break things and, and so scuba has really they're they're the group their community uh very professional in the way that they um treat each other they treat the business they they drop they drop the money uh they take care of the business i know smoke and ale they will shut down like they shut their doors and it's only scuba uh scuba people in there and i mean it's just i think it, i mean if we talked to fernando i'm sure that he would say that it is it has boosted those those nights when scuba is there it'll boost their business dramatically um with just the amount of business that comes in for that absolutely That's awesome. 
that's my big thing yeah. because uh you know smoke and ale want to promote that business because they're intentional and they do care deeply and i love to see that and i hope that everyone that comes to scuba uh, becomes a fan of that place it just shows that extra mile because i can get how people might be um weary of a big group coming um but that's the thing it's like you never know when the next opportunity is going to walk in and i personally say any place that allows um a big group to come in and smoke cigars i'm happy to go check it out and talk about it for sure especially in the nashville area but you know it's just that difference of just saying hey we want to make this and we believe in the vision uh versus some people are like all right how can i just straight profit off this it's like i want to bring you the profit but uh you know it's just about being good to people that we're bringing and being accommodating you know we don't really ask for much and that's the big thing are you creating a welcoming environment because if you are i want to promote you in such a way because again it's a thing where i'm not getting paid off this joel's not getting paid off this having to edit the photos and everything and uh but we're bringing these businesses a good amount of money so it's supporting small business supporting people and uh having a good time so let me ask you, you know uh, i say so, that yeah so when you are on your website or whatever so so you can anticipate how many people are coming and i guess i'm a, i'm assuming that there's some registration process so that you can keep up with people right is there a group or how does that because i know no, there's none not there's okay none. there is none that's the beautiful no, thing just there's throw none. it out there just throw it out there on instagram mm -hmm. we throw it on instagram okay. all send messages into uh, different functions like i just invited the nashville bitcoin community in a group chat i will uh just kind of throw it out there to different people i know who will invite friends because the big thing is everyone's welcome and you know the number's not always necessary like i tried to pop up scuba last month i think we had 15 people but that was fine that was beautiful and uh, it's about the experience and the community that is created right there Exactly. And, you know, they say that relationships are worth more than money, right? And so getting to the money part is that, you know, there's some places that money can't buy that relationships get you into. And so, mm -hmm. you know, when you're focusing on relationships, I mean, relationships, even I tell my wife, you know, with the amount of networking that I do and that we do with our nonprofit, that, um, you know, there's times where it's a relationship, the relationship, it, there's no amount of money that would, would, would get you into a place, but a relationship will. And so with that, uh, Zachariah, where do you see scuba in the next two to three years in Nashville? Well, I certainly hope it grows to a point where we can just start doing cooler things and adding value. Um, we've been talking about doing t-shirts maybe that's on the agenda. And uh, we just want to kind of get to a place where we can sustain it, but also we have uh, the uh, vehicle to kind of, the engine to kind of fuel the dream to get things moving forward. Like I want to do a rooftop scuba at some point. I'm not sure about the logistics of that. I have a few possible connections there. We'd love to do a scuba concert where we have like bands playing. And so we're just trying to find different ways to again, execute cool ideas. and that's a big thing of balance too because joe and i will talk about that all the time because again other people will put their vision on it but really it's uh our vision at the end of the day and so we sit there and talk about what would be cool and so that's kind of the hope is that in the future we'll be able to uh get enough of a good reputation where like you said we're going to these venues and they treat us nice we treat them nice where more doors are open to where we can start uh going to a variety of other places and also just have the ability to put together cool events so that's really just the vision behind it is to uh you know we don't have like a here's a five-year business plan or anything we're not trying to make profit off people but we're like how can we uh, keep this going in a healthy way and how is it going to stay fun so that's really the that vision. is that is amazing and so as we get ready to end our, uh, as we get ready to end, I just want to, again, thank you, Zachary, for taking the time to hop on here with me. Like I, I personally am a big supporter and I love scuba. And like, like you said, we met and then I, I was able to, to connect you with the bank. And then your brother came from Kansas city and I was able to connect him with the bank. 
And then so much business and so many relationships have been cultivated through this uh, networking, uh, not, I call it community networking event scuba, but is there so many different networking events out there that this networking of this networking group or this community, as I like to refer to it, is so unique in the way that, you know, I, just the young professionals that are there are just so open. Um, they're not stuck up. They're not to themselves. Um, they're very open in conversation and welcoming. And it's just every time that I've been there, I've always felt welcoming. And of course, the founder, uh, you and, and Joel, you have been so kind to you make sure that you work the room and, and welcome everybody and talk to everybody and spend a little bit of time talking to them. And, you know, it's uh, people, I think that's probably one of the reasons Zach Ryan is that people come back so many times is because like some people that I talk to and I'm there, they're like, Oh, who, 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 uh, who's leading this thing or who's on like, Oh, that's Zachariah over there. You know, they don't even know. And it's just like, you don't carry yourself as, you know, um, yeah, look at me, you're very humble and, and, you know, nobody would even know that, that you're the founder of scuba. And so you carry this humility with you where you just want people to create community and to have fun and to build relationships <laughs> And you're providing an environment for people to cultivate that. And so I want to thank you for that, Zachariah. Absolutely. I'm definitely great. Yeah, thank you. You know, like I said, I just try to live my life with a servant mindset. Ultimately, Jesus is my boss. I like to, you know, make the boss happy. And uh, that's my big thing. And just putting together these events, which everyone's welcome to. Ms. Uh, Ms. Joan, I'd love to see you uh, this month. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the 24th at Smoking <laughs> Ale, 6.30 p.m., and it's a uh, mom and dad scuba, so the guys are going to wear their white button-up shirts and their white New Balance sneakers looking like they're ready to mow a lawn, and all the women are going to wear their mom jeans, so it's going to be fun. <laughs> mom jeans. I didn't even know there was such a thing as mom jeans. That is oh, yeah. funny. I don't, definitely, you said it was the 24th, right? The 24th. 6 30 p.m. at Smoking Ale in Brentwood. I can get that address. I might as well mention it in here because I guess there's more than one, which I did not know. But the uh, address for the Smoking Ale we are talking about is 15551 Old Hickory Boulevard. I know exactly where that is. Yeah. Yep, that's right. 15551 <laughs> Old Hickory Boulevard, Nashville, Tennessee, 37211 coolness awesome, cool. awesome awesome well very cool I've, uh, throughout throughout my networking i've made some connections in the t-shirt uh arena so i'll have to connect you there because um very good deal on t-shirts get ready i want to do some t-shirts for uh the breakthrough you podcast and then also um, also some connections on some bands since we're, we're getting our fundraiser for breakthrough nashville <clears throat> um up and running and so those are some connections that I'll, I'd love to pass your way as well. But thank you so much, Zach Ryan, for taking time to hop on the Breakthrough podcast. And one qu- last question that I have before we end is I ask everybody this is, you know, it's so important to self-develop. You know, how can we pour into others if we're not pouring into ourselves? And what is it that you do? What do you, how do you, develop yourself is it a podcast what's your favorite podcast what's your favorite maybe an audio book or a book that you read a youtube channel how do you keep yourself motivated and self-developed every day a variety of things uh, favorite podcast right now is damon thompson ministries he is a charismatic preacher i enjoy and i've just been learning a lot about the bible through that i develop myself through other people and just getting involved it's doing things uh, mm-hmm. like scuba for example it's, um, you know, figuring out logistics of how can we pull off a new theme, a new event, a new venue, talking to a different person, connecting that way. And really, it's just doing life with people such as yourself. And it's just the thing where it's like, how can we do something to make an impact? Because a lot of people are just here to coast. And uh, I'm not in this life to coast. You know, I have a level of contention. That's right. But my big thing is I want to just connect where it's like, 
hey, maybe I could talk to this coworker at the bank and figure out how we can acquire this client. Uh, maybe I can collaborate with someone on a musical project. I do songwriting as a side gig. And so that's been an awesome thing. And just finding ways to create and develop new things with different people. And that's really the big thing. People will challenge you grow. And I think life is best lived when you're in a community and just finding that community, building that community. And uh, that's the big thing. How do you get a good friend? You got to be a good friend. And so that's the thing. I try to make sure I'm in the right posture of I'm being a good person to people. I'm being a good friend to my friends and uh, just creating that environment because I want to have good friends and I want to keep growing. And so each day I just have that mindset of just I'm here to serve and uh, God's got me here on duty. So Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Zachariah, for, for joining us today uh, on the Breakthrough You podcast. And, you know, of course, on the Breakthrough You podcast, 90%, if we can break through our mind, uh, the body will follow. And so the mindset is the biggest challenge for us is to get is to break through that. And so from all of us at the Breakthrough You podcast, thank you so much, Zachariah, for, for hopping on. Thank you, Joan. For, for hopping on and um, we will get this podcast out and get it spread. This is definitely a great podcast that you're going to want to listen to if you're watching or listening. Um, and make sure that you subscribe to the Breakthrough You podcast. We're also on Instagram and uh, Facebook as well. But follow scuba, S-C-U-B-A dot dot collective dot collective scuba dot collective you don't want to miss it especially the the pictures on instagram are incredible joel is a magician when it comes to photography and just what you have created zachariah is incredible and so thank you once again for joining us and um had a great time we'll talk to y'all soon